My viral Iro video has over 1 million views right now. It's some of my best work, but I'm still constantly surprised at just how many views it actually has. Thousands of people have thanked me for making it. Some even say that it's helped change their perspective on life. I'm eternally grateful I could inspire such a great change in some people's lives. With that being said, there are some legitimate criticisms jabbed at it, and I thought I'd go over them today. There was one part where I misspoke, or rather wasn't very clear. I implied that all ideas are equal and that we should always try and find common ground on charged issues. Neither side is perfect and they both have valid points. You should listen to what they both have to say and make your own judgment. Humble people seek to find alternative truths. If there is a disagreement between two options, the rational thing to do is to look for a third option that both parties can agree on. But this isn't true. Not all ideas are equal, and some disagreements are so fundamental, so foundational, that common ground can't be found. For example, Iroh didn't tell Zuko to rationalize with Azula, he told him to beat Azula. What I was getting at in the video is that a lot of times we're trying to solve the same problem through different methods. A lot of times, for example, we actually agree on the facts, but we disagree on the methods. We don't agree on how we should implement policies given the available facts. I still think this is largely true for most issues, but yes, there are some issues that are so foundational that I don't think common ground can really be found. Sometimes we don't even agree on the very foundational facts. This is an idea I've tried to push on my channel now as I've realized that was a flaw in my other video. Just watch my recent video on the philosophy of Avatar where I go over moral character and I explain this in more detail. I was really trying to say that we should find the root at where we disagree and then try and find common ground there. What I'm trying to say is that oftentimes there is a common issue you're trying to solve, and this should inspire some level-headed conversation. The rest of the video I stand by, I'm just going to go through some common critique. There's a common critique where people take this clip and say that I was wrong. No religion, political opinion, or even success in life makes you a better person than someone else. Period. Dot finish, end of discussion. They say this because they naturally think, hey, I'm better than Hitler. But in the context of the video, what I was trying to say is that you shouldn't think of yourself as better than other people or else you too can fall into their evil ways. It's perfectly valid to acknowledge the fact that you're better than some people at certain things. If you've watched the video, this is why I contrasted Zuko and Azula's firebending. It's okay to see yourself as better at certain things than others, but we ride a slippery slope when we start to believe that we are better than other people. But the problem is when you think that you are inherently better than someone, that's when you can fall. I believe that we all have equal inherent value but different aptitudes, and those aptitudes don't make you a better person. What I was trying to say is that it's important to acknowledge your evil potential, as Ozai was once an innocent baby. Just because you aren't evil doesn't mean that you're immune to it. Jumping back to the other point, Discussing opposing ideas is good to gain a holistic perspective. It helps you understand the other side of things and potentially learning from them. However, this all hinges on both parties' willingness to actually have a level-headed discussion. If one side isn't willing to actually discuss these ideas, then there isn't really much point in having any discussion. They haven't opened themselves up to that idea yet. Proverbs 18 verse 2 says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only expressing his opinion. This is actually where Azula was in the show. In the beach, they try and have a sentimental conversation with her, and again later in the comics, but she's unwilling to open up to the idea of changing, and that's what I was trying to get at in the video. The video is about pride, and I juxtapose this with humility. Humility in this video was often confused with self-loathing and a lack of confidence, but that isn't what I was trying to say. I said in the video that there's nothing wrong with being proud of yourself for achieving something. I even played the clip of Toph learning how to metal bend to emphasize this. Feel good about yourself. Be proud of who you are. These may not be bad principles in and of themselves if you think superficially, but this was a common complaint so I think I should clear things up. If you don't engage in religious discussions, particularly Christian discussions, you might not be familiar with the kind of pride that I was talking about. Pride, which can also be described as like self-conceit, is a deadly sin. Pride is what actually made the devil the devil if you subscribe to Christian theology. It's that Lucifer was discontent with the position God gave him. 
He put his own authority over God, and that's essentially what the pride I was trying to get at. The pride people usually think of is when you say you take pride in your work or you're proud of something. The phrase can essentially be substituted for something like has warm-hearted admiration for, which isn't wrong and is far from a sin. I admit, I should have devoted more time into making that distinction. People have naturally asked, if the solution isn't to think of yourself as better than other people, should you then think of yourself as worse than other people? And the answer is no. I would actually argue that this is more of a self-esteem and arrogance issue rather than a pride and a humility issue, but I got asked this enough times so I thought I might as well give my opinion on it. The humility I was talking about before was more moral in nature. It has to do again with, am I better than this person? Do I have more worth than this person? This personal humility I'm going to get into has more so to do with like, am I cooler than you? Aren't I just the greatest, most amazing person in the world? When it comes to this personal implication of humility, I believe that the solution isn't to think of yourself as worse than them, but it's to just stop thinking about yourself. Don't overly love yourself or overly hate yourself, just stop thinking about yourself. I think that a lot of self-esteem issues not come from people necessarily thinking too low of themselves, but thinking of themselves too much. I believe this position stands strong on intellectual grounds as well. Humility as defined by C.S. Lewis is not thinking less of yourself, but to think of yourself less often, and I believe that's the right approach. It doesn't mean that you should never think about yourself or never notice your flaws. It just means you should focus your efforts outwards on something other than yourself more often. For him, that's God. For you, that can be your family, your significant other, anything else. The fact of the matter is, if you're always thinking about yourself, constantly worrying about every little detail, you're bound to spend too much time thinking about the negatives. There's this thing I saw a few years ago called Snapchat dysphoria, where people would seek cosmic surgery to look like a filtered version of themselves. Around 50% of patients say they want cosmetic surgery to look like how their phones tell them to look. This can only come from an incessant obsession with looking at ourselves online. To be clear, I don't think this is actually like a new disorder or anything, but it does show what happens when people spend too much time looking at every little detail about themselves. We're bound to find problems when we do that. I don't think that the solution is to look at ourselves in constant adoration as to breed arrogance, but I don't think the solution is to look at ourselves and think lowly of ourselves. So the solution to me is to spend less time thinking about ourselves overall. Humility is to look at yourself and acknowledge your relative strengths and weaknesses. A humble athlete is not someone who thinks he's worse than the other athletes. It's someone who's grateful for his talents, understands his strengths, but doesn't dwell on them too often. He acknowledges that he still has much room to learn and grow from anyone. An athlete who constantly helps bring their teammates up as well. That's a humble athlete. At least that's what it is to me. This is something I started taking to heart more. I'm invested in self-improvement, but I know that at the end of the day, I'm improving for something beyond myself as well. In my what is the point of living video, I started explaining the sacrifice of love and tried to explain the importance of experiencing life with a real family and friends. I explained the importance of your sphere of influence and how you aren't alone and how you're part of a greater unit. If you're interested, check out that video. Back to Lewis, it's probably this idea of thinking beyond ourselves that would make him think that our obsession with the phrase love yourself is probably misguided. It isn't that loving yourself is bad, it's just that it isn't the highest good or the end in it of itself. It isn't something we should constantly be thinking about. It's like paying attention to yourself breathing or walking. It's kind of awkward thinking about this bodily process when it's just supposed to naturally happen as you focus on other things. So take it or leave it. That's my advice as it pertains to humility, which I would actually argue in this case is more of a self-esteem issue, but I digress. One final thing I thought I would clear up before we finish this video. People thought I was throwing shade at Korra in the end of the video, but that isn't actually true. I wasn't actually trying to poke fun at the show, but I can see why people would think that. The Avatar is the one bender for all the people. Thus, he must live as they do. This is why the Avatar state is supposed to be a last resort, not some cheat code. 
The thing is though, the show itself makes fun of her for this. I even copied Tenzin's wording here to draw parallels. I don't think we're supposed to agree with what Korra did there. Korra misuses the Avatar state in this scene, but come book 4, she doesn't use the Avatar state until her back is against the wall against Kuvira. And that's how you're supposed to use it. She's even pressured to abuse it by Opal and Jinora, but refuses to. It was a subtle bit of character development, I think. So yeah, there's enough Korra hate that exists on the internet, I wasn't trying to add on to it. <laughs> Watch my analysis on Tenzin if you want a more positive depiction of Korra, I think that's one of my best videos actually. So yeah, there's the video, hope you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff, I'll see you guys next time. No, this shirt is not for sale. Not yet. Can't mass produce it.